What's it like to go, you probably have the template here, to go from being a regional performer in the southern Florida area to now being a national act, you know, over 12 years. You've really worked your, you've had a nice business plan, I guess. Um, what advice would you give to new performers who are starting out as regional bands to break into a more national? Out, three words that Luther Allison uh, told me before I got the job with Junior. I had seen him in Fort Lauderdale at the Riverwalk Festival mm -hmm. before he died. Uh, yeah. And uh, I had asked him for the, for advice. Yeah. As he and he told me to keep on picking. He just yeah. said, just keep on picking. Yeah. And good things will happen. Yeah. Just keep on playing. Mm -hmm. And you never, if you don't keep doing it, you're never going to get the fruits. Yeah. yeah. Of the hard work, you know. Yeah. So I just kept doing it. Mm -hmm. That's all I could tell him. It, it's really tough. You got to be really strong yeah. to do this. Yeah. I, 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 I don't feel that I, I was gifted, or I was given the gift of. Uh, a, a talent or anything. Mm -hmm. I was given the love of the music. Yeah. I think that's the gift that I was given. Because I loved the music so much, I, I kept wa playing. I kept wanting to play yeah. and practicing and, and, and gigging as much as I could because I loved it. Right. And I think it just comes down to that. You just yeah. gotta keep on playing. And I, I, I kept doing it. I kept doing it and eventually I got my first agent. Right. Somebody noticed and, and represented me, mm -hmm. and then I moved on to another agent. That's what usually what happens. You yeah. move on to other yeah. agents, and then the, you keep playing, and people, you know, you build a following, and yeah, and you never know. You right. never know what happened, but it might never happen. Yeah, yeah. But it's a you know it's a great ride trying to get there. Yeah, you know? is if it, you love it, it's, that's, yeah, you can get through the the hard times. Is it easier to get there and get through those hard times with the technology that's available today? I think the it is now. The, the Facebook, and, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Facebook How, is uh, uh, the the social networking yeah. thing is a is an incredible tool. Right. How have you been able to take advantage of it? I start. I started it w uh, with. Well, it's funny because uh, the owner of the Bamboo Room in Lake Worth, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Russell Hibbert. Um, Turned me on to MySpace. I yeah. had no clue yeah. about MySpace. Years ago. I'm like my dad in, in terms of the technology thing. I'm always like way behind the whole technology. I mean, yeah. it, he just got a VCR last year, so <laughs> yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same way. And so, like five yeah. years, five six years ago, he's like, you know, you got to get MySpace. You got to do this stuff. You got to, you know. And he told me stories about bands, you know, building up their followings quickly through MySpace. Right. So I started with the MySpace thing. Yeah. And you know, and people were coming out to the shows. I found mm -hmm. when when I went on my first tours, people you know discovered me through the MySpace. Right. They were coming to the shows, out of town, you know. And then Facebook came along, and that really helped. A sure. Lot. Sure. It it really shrunk the world. You yeah. Know? And, uh, yeah. I you know I, I let every, you, I let everybody know where my gigs are at. I you know I post. Uh, pictures and videos and it, it really helped yeah. it really helped yeah yeah you know I, I read like for example Jennifer Magnus when she's on the road the next day after a gig she thanks the people for last night and tells where she's going to be tonight come on out and say hi you know and that's a great way to keep in contact with your it's fans a, it's it's yeah and it's yeah. a genuine thing you know it's not a it's there's nothing phony about it it's not most of those most of the acts I know Jennifer does that yeah you know she's yeah. personally doing it right most of these guys are doing it. Zito does it, you know. Yeah. Mike Zito. Mike Zito, sure. He's on, uh, Samantha Fish. Yep. Yep. Trample on the foot. They 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 take they do it. You know they don't have their manager doing no. that stuff. They're no. doing it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great way yeah. to connect. I like know. chatting with my fans when I have the time to. It's yeah. really great. Yeah. 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 Although I got hacked, my 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 Facebook page got hacked. Uh, oh no. Last uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and. I lost all my friends. Oh, what a sad feeling! It's, oh, it's a terrible. <laughs> feeling. Oh, I know. I, I had five thousand friends, oh, and they were all gone. Yeah, and and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I had to build. You know, I'm, I'm building the building it up again. Yeah, but oh, know. how sad too! <laughs> I hope nobody goes. Oh God, he dis he's dissing me as a friend. We'll never go see. Well, it. some people, some people take it seriously yeah, too. Yeah, I had I went one one time when my uh, my laptop was stolen, and a fan had Facebooked me, and she said. Oh, I wanted. I just wanted to know where you were playing, and before I could reply, they broke into my house and stole my laptops and yeah, my TVs. Yeah. So it took about a week to get another computer. Mm -hmm. I get my computer. I open up the Facebook inbox, and this yeah. lady replies back, "Well, <laughs> I was just wanted to know where you were playing." Yeah, 
you know, yeah. people tell me you're good to your fans, but this proves otherwise. <laughs> Shame on you. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, people out there, if, if, if you got unfriended, it wasn't me. Yeah, right. Talk to Mark Zuckerberg. There you go. Good. Now, right now you're touring in support of your sixth CD, Live and Dream. Live in the Dream. Live in the Dream. And, um, yeah, the, the the wasn't on my cover. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Um, so where, is, where does this CD go in, in your career? Where, where, what's the vision of this CD and how does it move your career forward? What? Well, it's, the, the way these, these albums have been coming, every, every CD I think has been, uh, is much more mature uh -huh. and uh, it's mature. Every CD has gotten better to me. Yeah. I think my, my writing improves with every CD. Mm -hmm. uh, my playing improves, my, the, the tone of my guitar improves yeah and, yeah and uh you know i think this is i'm really proud of this one and i yeah. and, and i i think this is my best best work yet i think yeah it's got a great sound um, yeah i got great musicians in mm -hmm. it i i've uh i have uh you know i had uh, a john ginty from uh, robert randolph's band play keyboards on oh, it. Nice. Did a really good job yeah. on it uh really good sidemen mm -hmm. uh who filled in uh, to to add things uh nicole Hart, did nicole Hart play on it no, Nicole didn't do it on play on this one. Okay. Um, okay. Emma Dean Rivera, uh, Harry Belafonte's old uh, percussionist oh, was wow. on it. We had a little percussion. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's you know it just came out really good. I, the, the songs I wrote, I'm very happy with. Yeah, yeah. And, you, uh, are you do, you're doing less covers now, or did yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. That's usually what happens. I've I've discovered that as time goes on and you 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 you're, you're playing more and more and, mm -hmm. and traveling more and more you, you're writing more songs yeah yeah and uh you're having more experiences yeah, that are now you're having more experience songs. exactly yeah yeah when i was a side man you you know you you didn't have a heck of a lot to write about you know right you did the gigs and uh, you know you did the gig and you went home and yeah you know. yeah but uh, when i took over and started fronting a band i've encountered more ex more experiences and sure and uh it's made me into a, a a better song, right? Yeah, now. yeah. I know one of the uh, men who write, who's written for you is Graham Drought, yeah. and his stuff is just spectacular. Um, Ghosts of Mississippi. Yeah, I think that song is just amazing. Um, how? Who is he to for, for our watchers? I mean, the, the name is familiar to me because I followed him now for ten years through your career and all. But what is he in in music? Is he just a songwriter? No, he he's a he fronts a, a blues band in Miami called mm -hmm. Ico Ico, okay. and they've been around for 30 years. They were the, the house band at Tobacco Road in Miami, which is the, the oldest bar in Miami. Right, and, right. And it's been a blues bar for years. And, right. And he's, uh, he's a legend. He's a, a local legend. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's toured a little bit. You know, he, 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 back in the 80s and 90s, he toured quite extensively, and he's, uh, he's you know, he's laid back now. He's, right on the traveling and but he continues to write great music yeah. hasn't put out a record in a while no he's but a tremendous songwriter i think i yeah. think he's as good a songwriter as randy newman or wow. john hyatt um, yeah hit my first cd burn uh i think half of his material is yeah. On the, yeah half to three quarters of the material on right was his right right because i needed to help I, yeah I, I really was was a novice at songwriting back then and and i needed his help and uh yeah i'd known him for about uh Ten years by the time I, one of the first uh, the first jam sessions I ever got, went to, he ran. Right, right. Uh, he's a bass player as well, and and uh, he was a tough guy. You know, he wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't one wasn't as tough as Junior, uh, but man, if you couldn't cut it on stage, he'd he'd walk up in the middle of the bandstand and tell you, "You need to come back when you're better." <laughs> you know, he, yeah. I've seen him do it, but he never did that to me. He never pulled the plug out on me. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, he was very supportive of me, and and. Uh, well, it must be a thrill when when he contributes songs to you, and you know, you know where you are in his uh, hierarchy yeah. of who he provides music for. It makes me feel good, and yeah. and and I think uh, part of my mission in life is to is to get his music out to good. The people too, because I love him very much. Oh, and, stuff is great. and I think the world needs to know how great of a songwriter he is. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember the, the the first time I ever collaborated with him, his daughter. She was like 13 or 14 at the time. And uh, I walk into the house and she goes, who are you? I said, my name's Albert. I'm here to write songs with your dad. Yeah. And she goes, 
well, why don't you write your own song? <laughs> and I and I told I says because I can't go back go to your room. Yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> I really needed his help, and and he uh, he's been with me every step of the way. I, I went my my uh, prior previous CD um, keeping on. I yeah. didn't put a Graham song on, and I yeah, yeah. kind of wish I had. Yeah, yeah. It probably would have made a bigger bigger difference. Yeah. In the, well, I don't think so because you had a CD, a song on that CD, I believe, "Bad Year Blues." Uh, these are the days. Actually, was on, was the uh, was, was the, the CD. CD? Oh, so it was the one before. It was that. the one before that? Right. Yeah. Well, you had you had your own song, a "Bad right. Year Blues," right. which was for our listeners out there. Uh, was nominated by the Blues Foundation as a Blues Music Award Song of the Year nominee. What a, what a feather in your cap for I that! I was shocked. Yeah, I tr I soiled myself when I found <laughs> that out. when I found, when I got the, uh, yeah. My yeah. wife woke me up, eight in the morning. I thought my dogs had escaped. When the thing came out, out. yeah. When the, the when the nomination was announced, when yeah. the nominees were announced, yeah. She called. She was screaming through the hallways, and I thought something happened to the dogs. My dogs are runners. Yeah. I got a couple of boxers and. Yeah. One of them likes to bolt if they right, see an opening. Right. And I thought the dog got out. And yeah. Said, Albert, wake up. Yeah. Wake up. And I got up and I ran down the hall looking for the dog. Yeah. In my birthday suit. And she's like, uh, you just got nominated. Yeah. Yeah. It was and a, you're like nominated by I who? Was I go, what yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Song of the year. Yeah. And uh, wow. Yeah. So we went yeah. to Memphis. And yeah. I remember seeing you there. Yeah. Yeah, that was the last time I saw you. Yeah, that probably was. And then that song actually won Song of the Year from those Blues Blast Awards. The Illinois awards. Blues Blast Awards. Yeah, yeah. Illinois. And my other favorite song, I love Godfather of the Blues. That's just, uh, you know, those are two songs I can listen to and really get deep into the people that, that I've known and that are not here anymore, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, that was that, that didn't take me very long to write. No. I, no. I just thought about it. I, I, I thought, what am I going to write about? I said, I should write about Junior. And then it just kind of flowed. I think I wrote that song in about twenty minutes. Yeah, those are always the best. I just ones, had to, yeah. I just had to think of, about the, all the the things that I did, uh, all the places he played, and yeah, who he made famous, and yeah, and that's all I had to do. And his what he meant to Chicago. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was like the king of Chicago, man. Yeah, to me. I mean, there were lots of great artists out of there, but he really had, had their heart. I yeah. think he was the heart of of Chicago. I think he embodied. Mm -hmm. He never left Chicago. Yeah, you know, lots of these guys go move out to the suburbs when they make make some money. Right. And uh, man, he stayed in. He stayed on the South Side. Yeah. Off of Seventy Second hey. and, and Stony, and 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 he never left. You know, and he and and uh, people in Chicago knew that. You know, they loved him. Yeah. So I. That's where where the song came from. Cool. You know? Yeah. And he he seems to have that that um, personable personality where some of the other guys again who've made it big are a little bit standoff you seem like the kind of person who would embrace the city and and what it did for he him. did he never he he always talked to people to people he yeah. never sh turned anybody away yeah I, yeah I that's second gig I did with him on that on that uh, that uh, fill-in trip mm -hmm. we played at uh, the magic bag theater in Ferndale uh, Michigan outside of Detroit it's like a 600 seat theater and uh we finished the show he went backstage and everybody lined up the whole place lined up to see him and he yeah. talked to every last oh, one of those people we were there an extra two two and a half hours yeah. after we finished breaking down and everything there was still another hour and a half left for, for him to talk to people and he talked to every last one of them That's and he and he didn't jive either he it wasn't phony yeah it was another time i remember somebody had a jacket on and uh and uh he had a jacket that he had autographed like 10 years ago. And this guy goes, Junior, do you remember signing this this jacket back in so I don't remember where it was. And he looked at it and goes, hell no. I don't remember and everybody laughed. Yeah, yeah. You know, he was, a, he was really, he was honest, man. Yeah. And he was, and he was, he didn't, uh, he was a real deal and he didn't uh, jive anybody, but he talked to everybody. Right, he, right. He was uh, very good to his fans. Right. Good. Well, thank you, Albert, for taking time. And, thank you. Art. And to all our fans out there who are watching this and going to watch this great performance by Albert Castilla, one tip for you. After Albert puts, uh, puts his guitar through its paces, go listen to some old time Junior Wells. Huh? Thanks, everybody. Again, I'm Art Tapaldi, and you're watching Don O'Dell's Legends.